Hey there, Dorian here. Uh, a few people have asked me recently to explain what I mean by durable information infrastructure. Uh, so I thought it would be best to just put together a short video. So let me preface first with what I mean by information infrastructure. This is the stuff, uh, the materials and equipment that you use to make decisions, reason, communicate, recall the past, project the future, orient yourself in space and time, learn about the world, and imagine other worlds that are possible. So what does it mean for all this business to be durable? In short, hard to break and easy to fix. So durable information infrastructure, this is not a product or a service per se. This is more like a principle of value or constraint that pervades all of my work. And it emerges from a concern that itself stems from designing software and digital media systems my entire adult life. And that is roughly that our interactions with computers and access to digital information is uh, mediated by software products and themselves, which themselves are the property of vendors. And you can say, sure, so is everything you come into contact with unless you go off in the woods and become a survivalist or something. However, I submit that for most people most of the time, the relationship with these software vendors is significant in a way that not a heck of a lot of other stuff in your life really is. Now, there are a lot of things that have been said and written about the economic and ultimately political reality of this situation, but I want to look through the lens right now of durability. It's perhaps best demonstrated by example. There are books on this shelf, and by this I mean the actual physical artifacts that are 50, 60, 70 years old. And there's other books on this shelf that are republished or translated versions of books that are hundreds or thousands of years old. So how is it that I can possess books like the I Ching or Euclid's Elements or works by, I don't know, Marx or Rousseau or Spinoza, uh, and the answer is because books are just vessels and the contents are highly amenable to being transcribed from one to another. A key component of making information durable is that the content decouples easily from its physical manifestation. So, you know, when a 60-year-old copy of William White's Organization Man finally breaks in half, I can just get another one. But digital media in, uh, is not just content, it's also tools. So consider this. I got this toolbox when I moved out of my own for the first time over 20 years ago. In it, you know, screwdriver, pliers, vice grips, ham, putty knife, hammer, saw. All of this stuff works just as well as it did when it was new. And there's really no reason why it couldn't work for another two decades. Now, ask yourself how often you've experienced something like this with a computer. It's rare, isn't it? You wouldn't expect to pull one of these books off the shelf to find the pages have all gone blank, would you? Or you wouldn't expect to pull your hammer out of the toolbox one day and find it to try to hit a nail only to find that nothing happens because you haven't paid your hammer subscription. Or you, you, know, you don't expect one day to find that all the Phillips head screws in your house have been replaced overnight with Torx. So now you have to go out and buy a Torx screwdriver. But again, this kind of thing happens all the time with software. And that's because software and digital media is contingent. It's brittle. It depends not only on ongoing relationships with specific entities, but for those ongoing relationships to meet, remain in a certain state. Uh, just ask anybody who's used to, used to use Google's Reader product before they killed it, or more recently, the Inbox email product that they axed a couple months ago. Or, you know, suppose you work in an organization that switches every few years from PeopleSoft to SAP to Salesforce, depending on whatever sales rep uh, took whatever manager responsible to a three-martini lunch, and everybody else is left to deal with the fallout. Or, finally, consider all of the settings that go missing when you update your phone or computer, which of course you're goaded into doing every couple of years. 
And it goes without saying that in the interim, they've gone and moved all the buttons around. So it's really hard to preserve the, any kind of continuity when your information environment is continually being disrupted. And I believe that's a problem. We live in a world with and has an, un uh, an unprecedented capacity to remember everything indefinitely, but we're continually getting bits and pieces of our memories wiped. And again, this is not just for data and informational content, but also more abstract things like methods and concepts. And the refrain is typically something like, eh, technology is moving too fast. And it's like, no, that's not totally accurate. What's moving fast are vendors and their products. Vendors are releasing new products and new features. New vendors are showing up on the scene just as other vendors are leaving it. Vendors are getting acquired by other vendors and vendors are going out of business or discontinuing products or features to satisfy their own internal priorities. So my overall message here is that this is not a force of nature. This is actually something you can change especially if you have any kind of control over any kind of budget within your organization, and doubly especially if you represent the vendor of one of these products yourself, because every vendor of one product is a user of many others. So wouldn't it be kind of amazing if all of us could have the confidence that the digital information infrastructure that we use today would still be usable far into the future? And like not even a hundred or a thousand years, let's start small, like 10, 20, 30 years. What would we need to make that happen? It really reduces, in my opinion, to taking a census of all the vendors that you rely on and asking what happens if this thing goes poof. And then you take that information and you figure out which kinds of terms are acceptable in your relationships and which aren't. Because unless we do go off into the woods, we're always going to have to have relationships. And so this principle is about asserting some agency over the content and structure of those relationships, if for no other reason than for the continuity of your own information infrastructure. So I've managed to do this for myself, and I've helped clients do it. And if you value this kind of quality in your environment, I could also help you. Because imbuing your digital information infrastructure with some durability is an attainable goal, even an affordable one. That's all I got for today. Thanks for listening.